Hi everyone, I'm Steve Coleman, Senior Community Manager on Total War, and I am once again sat down with some of the lovely development team for Warhammer 3. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the next DLC and update 6.0. Um, so before we dive into that, let's do some quick introductions. Everybody knows Rich. <laughs> Hello everyone. Yeah, I'm Rich. I'm the game director. I look after the entirety of the Total War uh, Warhammer trilogy. Josh, a new face. Uh, tell us who you are, what you do, and maybe just some highlights of stuff you've worked on in the past. Ah, certainly. So I'm Josh. I'm a battle designer on the Warhammer 3 DLC team, and I had the absolute pleasure of working on Chaos Dwarfs and, of course, Thrones of Decay. And yeah, just like with those DLCs, I really can't wait for everyone to see what we've got lined up for this. Awesome, thanks Josh. And Chris, another new face to our videos. Uh, who are you, what do you do, and what have you done before? Uh, so my name's Chris, I'm the Project Audio Director on Warhammer 3 DLC, and I've worked on various bits of Total War uh, games in the past. Um, I think m my favourite, actually, the one I started off with was uh, Warhammer 2 DLC, which was uh, Science of Fury. So I remember working on the Quattle on that one, that was quite good fun, so yeah. Awesome, and thanks for being here with us today. Um, like before, let's jump in with a little update on where we're at with development. So Rich, do you want to give us a little update on what's happening at the moment? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're into the thick of it. So I think last time we said that we were uh, fully, you know, moving into the iteration period. So we're, we're still in that, we're still playing the game, we're still looking at what we need to improve and change. And I think she wanted to like solve some of the puzzles. Um, so that's what we're still focused on, fixing some bugs, making, making changes around that. And I'm sure Chris will tell you a little bit more about the audio side of that as well. Yeah, our team are uh, very, very busy. We're flat out at the moment. So all the amazing work that the character artists and animators and VFX artists have done, uh, it's now all culminating in the, the audio phase now. So we take all that stuff and we, our team just help bring, bring the world of uh, and characters from Warhammer Total War to life. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll look a bit more into that a bit later on. Is there anything new that we can reveal today about the factions, like some new units or some bits you've been working on that, that you'd like to talk about today. I mean, Josh, if we pass over to you, maybe if you want to talk about uh, the Ogres, uh, if there's anything you can reveal to us today about what's coming with them. Oh, absolutely. Um, we could start off with the Paymaster. Quite an interesting unit because we all know that the Ogres love their meat, but there's also one other thing that they absolutely love, and that's their gold. And the Paymaster sort of serves to be that reminder in the battle that if he dies, or if you're not performing well enough in battle, you're not getting paid. So he'll, he'll sort of um, fulfill that support role that the, og the ogres um, don't necessarily have in combat, and will specialise in primarily enhancing a battle unit's capabilities in combat. What's, uh, you've been doing audio for Paymaster, I assume, as well. So what, is there anything you can tell us about that? How's that been? Yeah, so whenever we're looking at a unit, we're always trying to think about what's something unique about them or some characteristic we want to bring to life with the sound. And so the sound design team have done a really good job, um, you know, bringing out, you know, you'll hear sort of gold and chains and, you know, all clinking around. So it really brings out his characteristics. Uh, yeah, he does like gold. Yeah, he's, he's a big, big, <laughs> big, big fan of the money. Uh, so yeah, that's just, um, j just helps helps characterize him a little bit and bring, bring him to life. Yeah. I think his little knobloir likes it as well. That sits on his shoulder or <laughs> up by the chest or he something. Does, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what else is coming with the, the ogres? There's got to be more that you can tell us. Oh, absolutely. Um, one thing I think people will really like is the pigback riders. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's such an absurd unit when you think about it, when you've got this r vast, diverse world where you have giants, demons, and all sorts of monstrosities. And then you've got two knobloirs piggybacking on each other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're a fun unit. Um, they're going to specialise as sort of a early um, anti-large infantry for the ogres. Um, very well coordinated as well, as you can imagine, for, for well, individuals such as them on the battlefield. Yeah. Um, they'll be a bit uh, difficult to hit, but um, they'll be well worth the cost and, well, recruitment in combat. And the other thing I would like to talk about in regards to them is they'll have a regiment of renown. Nice. Um, these guys, they're even more absurd. Uh, they, <laughs> they have ventured into Bretonia, spent a bit of time there, and sort of enhanced their, let's say, jousting skills. So they'll be bringing um, a lot of Bretonian gear into combat, all the helmets, the lances and such. Yeah, before, I haven't seen the pictures yet, but I, uh, I've, I've already got an image of my mind, in my mind of <laughs> what that's going to look like. So I'm looking forward to that. They are, they are super cool. Oh, uh, absolutely. We're really excited by them. Elite, elite premium ogre cavalry. <laughs> <laughs> While we're on the subject of ogres, what 
what's been your kind of highlight of working on it so far with um, with this DLC? Like, have you got any favourite units or bits or mechanics that are coming into it that you're that you've enjoyed working on most? Oh boy, um, well, they've all been honestly a blast to work on. Um, like we, our artists and animators have done a fantastic job bringing them all to life. Mm -hmm. um, one unit in particular which has got on me is um, the Ashen Man Eater. That's mm. another regiment renown um, we're going to be bringing in. And that guy is, well, he spent time with the Skaven and he has picked up a few stealthy and sneaky skills from Skaven. And you're going to be bringing that kind of unit into the battlefield. Imagine this large ogre who's probably the worst character in the room <laughs> in regards to stealth, but he still manages to pull it off in combat yeah. somehow. Impressive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For anyone at home, if you're not sure what we're referring to, that's the... Um, the ninja looking uh, Manita Ogre. So yeah, he looks, he looks really cool. And he's like, kind of like a pseudo hero, isn't he, Josh? Yeah. Because it's just him, it's just, it's just one. It's not a, a unit of them. Um, so yep. yeah, Spe special guy to, to play, play around with in battle. Absolutely. We don't usually do units, uh, well, for regiment renowns like that at least, but that's, what, that's part of what makes him unique. Is there anything else you can tell us, like any abilities or anything to, to kind of shout about that are coming with the uh, ogres? Yeah, one thing in particular is for, um, for Golfag. It's an ability called Deadeye. But in this case, since Golfag's one of the more oldest accomplished ogres, um, he's also been through a lot, survived a lot as well. So during that time, you tend to pick up a lot of skills and proficiencies. Um, in this case, Golfag's learned how to use the pistol to wear down and snipe people from a distance. So the player will be able to pick any target, well not any target, any character they want and if they want to wear him down, maybe take a pop shot or even finish him off as they're routing, well, Golfag will be able to deliver that, that's for sure. Um, let's, look, let's have a look at Corn. Uh, let's not. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> let's have a look at uh, Orcs and Goblins. Uh, Rich, you're going to tell us a bit. Yeah, what yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. Are we revealing? Yeah, absolutely. So we've talked a lot about corn recently. So I guess that's why we're not talking about them now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I got my orders. I got my things the wrong way round. But uh, yeah, orcs and goblins. There's some cool stuff coming. You might notice on the table. Got a few spider riders down there, um, and there's a big reason around that. We're going to be doing Snaglag Robspit. He's going to be your legendary hero. So like we mentioned last time with Gorbad, that he's kind of a master of all the different, you know. Uh, Orcs and goblins and trolls and everything that makes up that, that their roster, this is now the forest goblins that are going to be coming to the party in Snaggler. If you don't know too much about Snaggler, he's an 8th edition character. He's uh, a forest goblin that rides around a big old giant spider. Um, we've actually had his regiment of renown, his, his boys, if you like, the Death Creepers, in since, uh, crikey, what was it? Um, not Warden the Paunch, way, way back. King of the Warlord. So like really old school. So he's been hiding out somewhere in the, in the, in the, in the Drac world and we finally caught him and now we're sticking him in the game. <laughs> um, and as you might imagine, for a forest goblin, he's all about poison. So you can expect some skills and some buffs and, and abilities all around that, which accentuate not only his skill on the battlefield, but also his, uh, his death, death creeper units and then his, his army as a whole. So he's gonna be a fun, fun one. Um, looking forward to seeing him uh, rock up. And then alongside that, we're also going to be introducing uh, a new hero. So that's going to be the Night Goblin um, Big Boss. Um, and this hero is going to be all about, again, accentuating things around squigs. So as you've seen in the past, we've introduced the, the Colossal mm -hmm. Squig. So I expect him to be able to like wrangle them and do some funky things there. Um, and you know the other squigs that we've already got in the game. Um, what else have we got? We've got loads more. Um, <laughs> Black Orcs. So we're doing Black Orcs with shields, um, something that I know a lot of you have asked for for a long amount of time. So they're going to be coming in as a, as a new unit. They've got these really big scrappy shields with the, you know, colourful sort of faces on them, tough as nails. Um, and they're going to be joining the, the fray as a new unit as a part of the DLC. Let's take a look at Corn. Uh, Josh, I think you're going to tell us a bit more about some of the units that are coming, some new ones that we can reveal today. Yeah, so one we can reveal right now is the Lord, um, the Bloodspeaker. Completely new for Korn. Um, we all know what Korn's about, all about the fighting, killing for the skulls, the blood, the gore and all that. Um, <laughs> the Bloodspeaker introduces a new sort of role for him. So support role, um, specialises in buffing friendly units around him. 
Um, but he also encompasses the best of Corn, which, as I've just stated, fighting everything. So this is a character you can easily have enhanced units in combat just by just getting him stuck in, and he'll be able, he'll be durable for that. That's for sure. Any others? Well, we've got Zangors, Pestigors, <laughs> and now we have Corngors, and oh boy, they're a really tough unit to say the least. <laughs> They all have a anti-large sort of um, role within the actual roster, so um, sort of mid. So you can choose in between um, the Chaos Warriors with Hellbreeds or with the Corngors. But one thing that sets the Corngors apart is they have the best qualities of a, a gore unit from the Beastmen roster. So they'll have abilities such as Primal Fury, Frenzy, and of course, as Corn is ever so watching combat, if they fall below his expectations, they will certainly get a buff that will make sure that when they kill, they're doing it right. <laughs> Corn sounds like it would be quite a fun one to do audio for. Uh, has there been any kind of highlights of that process that you want to talk about, Chris? Uh, yeah, Steve. I think um, as soon as we saw the roster for Corn, I think it got got our team pretty excited. And I know that the Slaughter Brute got one of our team members particularly uh, particularly excited. He's actually a, a metal singer in a, in a band. And I think it was a good... It was like a match made in heaven, really. So he wanted to lend his his vocal skills. It's quite terrifying, actually, what he can do playing <laughs> like. And yeah, the the slaughter brute is without a doubt the angriest sounding creature on the battlefield at the moment. So um, yeah, I was just reviewing it this morning with the team, and it's yeah, it starts to sound really good. You know, we looked at abilities for ogres. Is there any uh, for corn for skull taker that y you can tell us about? Yeah, so he'll have his cloak of skulls ability. Um, you'll have various means of enhancing it on the campaign side, but on the battle side, um, skull taker's a character you'll want to send against other legendary lords and lord characters in general. He's very good at um, one on one dueling, but the cloak of skulls will sort of enhance his defensive capabilities. Uh, in combat, providing he's got lots and lots of kills, his defensive stats will be progressively buffed. So this is a character w which you'll send against other characters, ideally with these stats enhanced. So you could get the best out of him and make him even more durable. And let's just say the opposing side will have a really tough time against him. So are those buffs enhanced by the amount of skulls he's taken, essentially? Oh yes. Oh yes, you'll want to get as many as you can to max them out. A little, little fact about the Cloak of Skulls, as soon as we saw the unit art for that, I said to the team, I, I want to hear those skulls. Like, I, I, it's, it's such a u unique cape. That's you, very, very morbid, cape, Chris. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is a little bit. Uh, what, what's probably more, a bit more disturbing is when the team, one of our team members said, I got you sorted, don't worry, I, I can get some bones. Genuine bones. I was, I was, I didn't ask too many questions other than you don't you know, do you when that kind of no, statement comes out. <laughs> other than they were, they were procured by humane means, so you know that that's fine. But when when you get up close to your, to the, the skull taker on, on the battlefield and you hear his uh, his cape, you know, flowing around, you'll hear you know real real bones, um, you know, on there, which is um, a bit gross, but you know it's you know it's pretty corn, cool, so yeah. Humane means. There's no further I, questions. I think we'll just leave that for us. Obviously, with all this paid content as well, we also have uh, the free stuff that comes, like the, the rebalancing, the um, the patching, the bug fixes, the FLC, that sort of stuff. Uh, is there anything coming as part of Update 6.0 that you can talk about? You betcha, yeah. The team's been working really hard on loads of stuff behind the scenes on that. So let's start with uh, the green skins. So the green skins are getting an update to the scrap system that we introduced in, uh, in Warhammer 2 for um, Warden of the Paunch. So there's um, some, going to be some UI and UX changes there to just help the flow, make it feel a bit easier, get some of those nice upgrades that you know the orcs and goblins need for, for battle. So that should uh, that should be a fun one. Um, now for the ogres, <laughs> oh Steve, it's an ogre hall. <laughs> so there's all sorts of stuff happening there. Um, we're going to be having some updates to the Great Moor and the offerings there. Um, but one that I quite like is also the, what Josh was talking about earlier. So with the Ogre Paymaster, our new Lord, all the Ogre Lords are going to get big names now. So nice. yes, yeah, it's not just reserved to our legendary Lords of the past. So that's a nice one for them. Um, and then Corn. Corn's got a big one. 
Corn's got a great one. They've got something called the Skull Throne. Um, all their legendary lords are going to get access to this new panel, which will feature um, a variety of different uh, timed buffs. You're going to be accumulating through battles skulls, and of course, once you've got your skulls, you're going to be spending them in this in this feature. So you're going to be doing all sorts of things like getting army abilities or spreading corn corruption. And as you progressively spend uh, the skulls there, you're going to progress up the tower and then get to some of the big juicy buffs at the end. Uh, so lots of skulls and lots of bones, Chris. The bone man over there, indeed. Yes. <laughs> More skulls for the skull frame. I'm not sure I want that, that particular reputation. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. It's okay. Uh, so yeah, we've mentioned in the past that the FLC content that's coming with this is going to be for corn. Mm -hmm. And I think the powers that be have given us permission to say who it is. Is that way looking at me? <laughs> Rich, <laughs> are you ready? Take it away, Chris. <laughs> this time around, our new legendary lord, free legendary lord, will be Arbel. And he is a pretty exciting character to work with because he is, his thing is, he wants to fight the biggest, baddest things on the battlefield. So, yeah, we wanted to make sure that he sounded, you know, mean, mighty, and just giving it his all. So the, the order team, the dialogue team did a great job in really channeling that that uh, that characteristic of him. Definitely a very different take and to uh, Skull Taker. So I think between him and, um, and Scarbrand, you've got three pretty great, you know, corn legendary lords here to play with. And um, as Chris said, uh, Arbor's all going to be about taking on these biggest battles for his feature called the Wrath of Corn. Um, so he's trying to do all the things in the eyes of Corn himself, you know, uh, to be that um, that that great champion. And yeah, with 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 playing around with ideas, uh, which was playing to his lore as well. So if you dig deep on that, and if you hear about what happens to him if he wasn't to succeed, well, we've got some ideas around that. Let's just say. And that also brings the count to 100, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, can you believe it? I know, that's, that's <laughs> crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. It's an amazing achievement. When we first started way, way, way back, and many of us have been working on the series for quite some time now, I don't think in our wildest dreams we'd get to that number. We knew there was lots to make, but yeah, it's quite a moment. Chris, let's talk a little bit more about audio and how all of that comes together. So what's your what's your process, I guess, from like conceptualization of a DLC mm. through to people hearing it for the first time and things like that? Well, I think any audio team is quite quite lucky to work on Total War Warhammer because it is such a, a rich world and as such an amazing character. So it is yeah, it is a playground for us to work in. Um, but our process starts really when we see the unit roster come through and we start seeing some of that concept art. Um, and we can start as our sort of departments, our dialogue department, sound design department, start planning out um, what we're doing at quite that early phase. So, uh, so our really talented dialogue team, they sit down with our designers um, and narrative team and they work out what we call a character bio. So this is all the characteristics of that unit or Lord or whatever it might be that, you know, how big they are, where they're, where they're from, what's their age, what makes them tick, what their some uh, vocal characteristics that we might be expecting. And from that, they go away to a really extensive casting process, and we get lots and lots of talented actors to come in and read for these parts. Um, and then we do, a, you know, like this this casting process is quite extensive. We make sure that we we re really nail so everyone's kind of has a score and has an opinion on these things until we kind of go right. That's that's the one. Uh, that's the match up for those units or that character or that lord. Um, and then the team will do some prototyping and maybe some voice processing, you know, make it may sound a bit corny or maybe a bit, uh, a bit more ogre-y. Um, and then finally doing what the team are doing right now is onto the actual recording. So we, our script writers have put together, you know, really great scripts for the characters. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I can't wait for the, for the audience to see um, what, we, what we've got this time around. And our sound design team, meanwhile, even before we start getting animations or VFX in, we can look at these unit rosters and go do our research and look up the lore. Um, what we really like doing is seeing where there's something unique or some characteristic we want to we want to bring out with with the um, with the sound design. Um, and the great thing about Total War is, is is the scale is from the giant battlefield right down to the um, thing. So with uh, to you know right up close. 
so we can make sure that they are their abilities or their projectiles or their weapons you know particularly for our lords sound really big so the player knows exactly what's going on in the battlefield or can have an idea in, in that chaos that there's something big and bad happening over there to the right up close um to all the uh you know all the character movements so we we break our layers down into you know footsteps and character armor so they might have something unique in their armor um, right the way to their vocalizations as well. So we spend a lot of time um, making sure that it, all that all that language of stuff is is brought together with the sound. So it's, yeah. it's a really fun process. You don't really think about that when you're playing the game and you're hearing all the sounds together. Mm. That every single one of those sounds has had like a a process yeah, that the, has laid it all together. That there's really... no, there's nothing for free in this, unfortunately. We've got to we've got to design everything uh, everything from scratch. But the team have a really really good time. It's it's, it's challenging um, because you know the designers. They throw a lot at us, and you know what they, what they want to do. Um, it's fun, though. It's fun. It, oh, absolutely, it, and I'm not players. sorry. <laughs> um, but it, I mean, the great thing about with us is we are bouncing off of what the amazing character artists, what the animators, what the VFX team do. So um, we can help bring all their amazing work to life with, with the sound, and, and um, you know, hopefully the players kind of kind of feel that. So it will feel visceral and feels real and. Um, you know they have a good time doing it. So yeah, you got some weird techniques, haven't you, on the team? Like how you make some of the sounds. Yeah, that's that's very true. I mean, this time round, um, we kind of had a, had a bit of a bonus. So when we had the squigs, so we've got the the traditional little squigs, and we've got this gigantic gigantic uh, colossal squig. Um, it's a chance for us to kind of maybe rework a little bit of the older content that we've got in the game so we can make the squigs sound even squiggier, a bit gross. Mm -hmm. um, but of course we've got this giant one. So we, we really <laughs> wanted one of this guy to just sound really gross. Um, and, you know, the team kind of go above and beyond and there's some... Um, when I saw the footage come through the recording session, because we've actually got a team out in Sophia uh, of sound designers and they really love re uh, yeah, recording stuff from scratch. And it was... Um, quite plush the grossest recording session I've ever had. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure porridge and yogurt and all sorts of weird squishy things were involved to make, you know, bring out the uh, the inner squig from these characters. Um, so yeah, it was it was quite quite. They, they went above and beyond. Yeah. They, they really did. And they certainly turned some people's stomachs here <laughs> yeah. when they saw the footage. Actually, I think we've got the clip that we can show. So uh, roll it. When you're playing and you see the colossal squig and you hear those wonderful sounds, think of that poor dev sucking on porridge. <laughs> At least we didn't have to do that. <laughs> <thing. laughs> but speaking of that, it's true. Group, group recordings. Group right? recordings. Yeah, we love to get our um, our devs involved. So uh, I remember. We, we have these emails that go out and say, right, okay, we need to do a group recording session for our ogres or our corn units. Um, and yeah, the team deliver and, and don't disappoint. And I think that we usually Thank get- Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steve did one as well this time around. Rich, Rich and I, uh, yeah, we've, we've done yeah, some, yeah. Of, some, of, some of the battle cries and, and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, we're in there somewhere. It was good fun, wasn't it? <laughs> it, was, it was great, although I couldn't speak for a day. So. No, my, I think my voice drops about two octaves after, it, after yeah. that. So everyone thinks I've got some horrendous yeah. cold afterwards. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really good fun. And, it, and you hear it in the game, you know, you, you get this, you know, this, this sound of the army, right? It's, you know, and it, it's, you know, the Tingrit do a great job processing and laying all this stuff together. So, you know, it's uh, the units, you know, you, you feel them on the unit, it's great. Three, two, one. For the Black God! Three, two, one. For, For the Black God! God! <laughs> okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Slaughter! Perfect. Three, two, one. Slaughter! And so once the team have done all their incredible work and we've got all the sound design and we've got all the dialogue together, then we start the mixing process. And actually all the, that's the bit I love the most is actually hearing everything all together. Um, and we start start balancing everything against each other. So we make sure that the most important sounds are, are heard on the on the battlefield, and you know all the tiny details when the characters get nice and close uh, are audible as well. Um, and it just it's just the final sheen, the final polish on everything. Um, a few last minute feedback notes, you know, are, are always natural in this process in our iterations phase. But um, yeah, that's that's the bit where we kind of put the final final audio polish on it. Yeah, awesome. It's got to be really rewarding see, hearing all of that come together mm. into that final product. Yeah, yeah, so much hard work goes into it from from you know from the audio team as well as the wider team, and it's uh, you know it's it is the the final step that you kind of go, yeah, that's there. We got we got something good in the bag there. Just makes it, doesn't it? Just immerses you in mm. uh, 
into the world. Well, thank you guys uh, for joining me for this today. It's been really great to give some more information about the next DLC and uh, update 6.0. Um, we'll be back later this month uh, with the official trailer, as well as some gameplay showcases and things like that on the run-up to release. Uh, so once again, Rich, Josh, Chris, thanks again for joining us. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. And I am once again sat down with some of our awesome development team, uh, including Rich, Josh, and Sean. Uh, before we, Sean. <laughs> it's not your name. <laughs> Sorry, face melt. <laughs> I, I'm obviously pining for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can we have Sean know. to draw one, please? Yeah. 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 Ch change my name here. Sorry, Chris. Yeah. <laughs>